And just like that, the cold season is upon us. Yes, it's so cold. It's very cold. So this is the time of long sleeves and under sh long sleeves under short sleeves. That's the season. Very, very cold. So good day, viewers, and welcome back to Zen Minutes. Thank you for joining us. I hope you're having a good day. And if you're not, I do pray that divine energy gives you that strength to endure. Okay, so don't forget our creed. We're going to jump right into it. Blessed are the weird people, the poets and misfits, the artists, the writers and the music makers, the dreamers, the outsiders, for they force us to see the world differently. Yes, that wasn't a good read, but let's get on with it. Um, last episode, we forgot to mention this very important thing. Um, on the issue of death, whether or not we view death as a positive or natural process, um, it does not and will not ever take away from the fact that we will grieve tremendously. We will grieve tremendously, especially when... Um, you know, we love or admire the person that has passed on. So let's not forget about that. Even though our minds and the way we view it, you know, we know that, okay, this is part of life. We will grieve. Like some people, I mean, there's no right and wrong way to grieve. But the important thing is to, you know, um, take it into perspective and continue. Because as I said, it's the, it's booked for everybody. So it's not like we have to um, speed it up, hurry it up, um, unless, as I said, you know, we are at that point where, yes, the quality of life is, you know, we depleted. But yes, we will grieve tremendously. Um, today we're talking about our favorite things. You know, can you um, bring to mind at the top of your head what your favorite things are? What are your favorite things? I know the first thing that will come to some people's mind is food, <laughs> because we all love food, or a favorite color, or a number, or stuff like that. So um, I like keeping a list of updated favorite. I have, listen, I have so many lists. I have, I update them regularly, because as I said, as we grow, things that we used to love, we, you know, we don't love it so much, and then we discover new things that we like. And so my, my list is always being updated. So let me see. Let me have a quick run through of what my current favorite things are. I, well, I have I actually had to put top five because this thing won't it won't la it won't stop. It could go on and on and on because it's in different categories. So I put the top five favorite things for me. Um, number one is making a list of everything. So that's jotting. I make a list for everything. I have a list for, oh my goodness, I don't even, I have a list for mantras, I have a list for solutions, I have a list called um, magic words, you know, words that I, just words that once you use it, sometimes your mind is looking for something like, I call them, sometimes I used to call them pill words, like something to bring to mind, to bring back like some type of balance when you're looking for something, to put things into perspective, so I have a list of words for that. I have favorite books, of course. Those are, I told you about one um, um, the other day. We put that on there. I have a, like, I have so much books, but I have top five, which I can, I can go right there. Some of them is right here. A book called 1984 by George Orwell. That book is so good. There's, oh, I can't even, if I go into favorite books, um, this will take up the whole episode. I, I won't even bother. I just mention them and go along. And I have Brave New World, of course. That is Brave New World, Fahrenheit 451, and a book called Peter of Mount Ephraim. Those three are a number one for me. Always battling for number one. Um, so yes, those and, and some others. But yes, I love those books. I have favorite um, movies. That's, that's too much as well. Because you know some movies, just that's too much. But anything with Denzel, with, um, Denzel Washington in it is, of course, going to be in it. Because I don't think that man has ever done a crappy movie, ever. So, of course. And Book of Book of Eli is, of course, always in that top for me. 
Um, so yes, so that is just number one of the top five. Making a list for everything. Jotting down everything. That is one of my favorite things. The other one is, yes, contemplating the meaning of human existence. People, I don't know. I just find myself, I just, I will be there. This happens regularly. It's just one of my favorite things to do. To sit and contemplate about, you know, these things. And the origin of things. I will be, and that, you know, that can carry down a rabbit hole. To thinking about the origin of something, anything. It's like a word. What's the origin of the word? Because every single thing has an origin. And the origin brings you into, way it brings you into cultures. It brings you into... Um, all sorts of stuff. But what do you think? What's the origin of something? You know, the first thing, of course, is I was going to bring you back to, like, the country or a culture of, you know, who used it, what they used it for, or certain practices, what's the origin of it, things that we do every day. What's the origin? And it goes so back. So uh, these parts take me down a rabbit hole all the time. And, yes, that's why sometimes you need balance to say, hey, cut the crap get back to the present moment and that is why zen is important it brings you back here and now you know so it's very good to know and contemplate these things the meaning of existence rather than just getting up and you know like we're robots you get up you eat your breakfast you go to work you come home and that's existing that's just existing and for some people that's okay but the mind can yeah you want to know what it's all about something else behind it what's underneath what's behind what's above what's, yes that's my second favorite thing to do um well that's my second second top five favorite things um what i like about me i love this list and i think i would implore everybody to have a list like this what i like about me everyone should have a what i like about me list what do you like about yourself no, I will not share these things because it's very awkward to... I'm just one of those persons that it's... I can't take a compliment, number one. It feels weird and I feel awkward. So, yeah, I won't share them, but everybody should have one. Because it, it's like... It's like a little secret superpower. You should have those things about yourself. You know, stuff like that. And, yeah, please do. If you've never done one, please have a What I Like About Me list. It can be updated, you know... You can go back every time and fix it. I say, okay, this is off, this is new, anything. But you have to have some kind of self-appreciation. Self, I mean, everybody talks about self-love. But, of course, a lot of us have, a lot of us talk about it. But not really, like half of us don't really know what it means. Because we, if we really, really take that into consideration and know what it means, half the things that we do are allow, we won't do them and we won't allow them. We will have, even if we don't, we will have the guts. We will have whatever it takes to um, only bring things or keep things around us that we want to keep or we actually like. So, yeah, that's another thing. It's a whole other issue. But please have a what I like, what I like about me list. And, yeah, keep it and update it regularly. The no another thing is decluttering. Minimalist activities. I love decluttering no if you know me everybody knows that i like to throw things away i love to throw things away especially uh, if it's just too much things in my opinion so in another episode we're gonna talk about minimalism and that is another project i have i've had that project for a while now but for some reason it's just not reaching to where i want it to reach but we're gonna talk about that and we're gonna have um do that project because in the the point is i want to just have like five things i'm supposed to just have five outfits five shoes five five of everything or ten it doesn't matter use your fingers we want ten or something or five of everything but um yeah i'm not there and sometimes it like i'm sometimes um i am reaching to that um aim sometimes like yes so i throw things away and i give them away and like okay i'm only i only have like ten or i only have like seven but somehow it builds back up but yes we're going to talk about that project another time because i am determined to be it that it brings me so much peace just to think about a room with just you ever seen those minimalist rooms oh you just want to sleep 
when you see them it's so tranquil it's so peaceful when i see a lot of things my mind gets like oh my god i just want to throw something away i want to throw it away i want to be able to see every corner of my room my house anything i don't like to see clutter so that's one of my favorite things too another thing or well, the last one this is number five is falling asleep to soft sounds i love falling asleep to sounds i can't fall asleep to in if it's very very quiet i can't fall asleep i don't know and it literally there's a saying that the um what's the saying about silence so loud or something like that but trust me people it is it's like this humming thing well that's they call it that is actually um that is the sound of um that symbol mm -hmm, that um symbol that is the sound so there is a sound in nature in the universe that literally goes um and when it's very 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 silent it is there that is the sound of the universe it's true people check it out if you've ever been in a room and um it's very very quiet you literally hear this it's like electricity it's like you hear it it's like mm, and it's so loud so to break that silence i like soft songs so you know that you know white noises is good fun most people use a fun so that's a very common one i use i have a lot of playlists like sleep playlists that different sounds either the rain either the ocean either um you know paper or something like that apparently recently i learned that it there's this this word that the new generation call it asmr or something like that where i didn't know they had, they had a term for it i like to hear paper flipping pages flipping i, I just like that but a lot of other things that yeah i like to fall asleep to soft sounds and i love hearing people read while i sleep even when i'm awake i love hearing people read it's so relaxing so yeah so those are my current favorite things and of course whenever we talk about favorite things we automatically talk about we bring to mind people so everybody has favorite people now of course i will not share with you my favorite people i will not share that with the world first of all it's going to be very awkward you know and plus it takes away that anonymous and mysterious and private aspect of that so it's easier it's just like if you meet a stranger it's easier to talk to a stranger i find and i know a lot of people have this as well it's easier to talk to a stranger like tell them your whole life story um because you know you'll never see them again or tell them something that you probably never tell somebody who you're close to or who you see every day so it's something like that so you don't want the world to know it's like your secret It's one of those secret things like your secret powers i have a list about that as well i have a list that is called um secret power actually just those things that you have or you do that you don't want to share with the world but it gives you a sense of powerfulness you know yes so you keep those to yourself so that's like with, with favorite people everybody has a set of favorite people that you know they really glue with they can you know and it's not actually you can even you have friends that you have different things that you discuss with them so for this close friend you talk about this thing for that close friend you, you open yourself in different ways so it's like that everybody you're close to a lot of people but in a different way so of course it's i'm going to tell you my um my list of favorite people who i've never met so i call them my sages my gurus whatever so i can tell you that so of course there are a lot as well not not a lot lot like like my favorite things but i so i put it down to top five no number one are um these are stoics so it's not one person in this in this as in this um case it's a group of people it's a um what you what would you call it a movement it's not a religion it's not a it's just a way of life it's stoics so i like stoics especially of course seneca and marcos everybody knows them and Epictetus, that one. Of course, they have a lot of funny names, of course, but those are my top three. I love the mindset of Stoics. I love the views of Stoics. It's just like, oh, these are my things. They've 
most of the things that they most of the views that they hold i find that oh these are my views so automatic is like it's automatic like okay that puzzle is you fit right in that puzzle it, you don't have to think too hard about it you don't have to nothing complex or anything but if when I, their views looking at their views when i was first you know when i first um realized realized that oh so these are stoic views i was like okay cool so these are people that you know as i said you find people with your set of thoughts your set of beliefs and it's like oh so that's what they call them so i love stoics um other um the buddha himself number two the good old siddhartha i love his views i love his um perspective as well and it is is like a whenever you need any type of spiritual balance i find that it's way more easier and less complex with his um approach to it than you know other religious figures i should say because you have a lot of it's not a religion per se but people still put buddhism in that but um i just like things that has um not so much violence i mean everything has a balance as i said other religions that is like violence is at, at the forefront of their um practice i don't know i just believe that the world definitely balances itself so i won't even go into it to say oh that is wrong or it's you know the universe will start that out and trust me as i always said it will start itself out the universe always balances out itself so but for me i like um siddhartha's views the third is j krishnamurti oh this is the most eloquent and prolific and i don't know what to call him he, he this speaker is you'll have to i'll put some of the links um in my description to some at some of these things that you can read up about these people but I Jidu is oh, I, can, I can't even tell you I put him he's like you know when you have um the seven chakras he's like at the crown he's the crown chakra and uh, number four of course there's this um speaker that I follow him Sadguru I love his views and especially because he puts a lot everything he balances with comedy he will say some things out his mouth and like oh my goodness you didn't think he was going to say that but Sadguru is cool and of course, last but not least, this is a whole group as well, black activists. I, these are like your pillar, your stronghold, your foundation. Of course, everybody knows Malcolm and Martin and, you know, all those um, popular ones. Of course, our national heroes in Jamaica, we have Paul Bogle, we have Nani, we have Sam Sharp. Of course, Marcus Garvey is well known worldwide as, as well. But you have even local ones in Jamaica. Like we have, oh, this I think Walter Rodney's from Guyana. This black activist is very, very um, well known in some circles. Like you can read about him, Walter Rodney, and we have um, Alexander Bedward. It's good to read up on him as well. Alexander Bedward was a figure in Jamaica that is that led a very, very good, um, um, very, very good. Um, what you call it? I can't find the word, but yes, it will come to me. But him and Leonard Howell, of course. He is, of course, the first Rasta. So you should actually read up about him. Leonard Howell, the first Rasta. D-Gong. And um, there's other people as well. Like yeah, this guy I followed on Timber Hawkeye. And there's this other one named Leo Babuta. He's a funny name. The last name is funny. I don't even know. Sure, he pronounces his name like that. But him as well and there's so much but the thing is it's it's good to have a favorites list it keeps you balanced it keeps you um it keeps you um that's the word i can find it keeps you balanced it keeps you going when on days like oh i'm not in the mood or something and you just need that little pep they're like a little pill they're like that little thing that you need to get through life and go through um so I asked the question, why do humans like favorite things? Apparently, I've read somewhere that, let me see. It, they said it boils down to how we're wired. And it's not only mentally, but also biological. Um, feeling good causes the body to balance itself. 
it causes balance and stability that's what feeling good does so it's like a, a survival mechanism that's what the study was saying like why people like our favorite things why do we like to feel good apparently it's a survival mechanism that when we do feel good homeostasis happens everything balances from the brain to you know the heart the lungs everything and it's a survival mechanism so it's kind of selfish it's kind of a selfish thing but yes it's something it's that another reason is also that the items that we have are um, have a lot of sentimental attachment a sentimental value so mm -hmm, that's number two it has yeah sentimental history and its connection to our past or something that we loved or something so that is what, another thing why people like favorite things so if you have never made a favorites list please go ahead and do so now I, I implore you to give it a try you know just get those pleasure brain chemicals flowing firing and don't forget we exist to bear exist we exist to bear existence sorry <laughs> We exist to bear witness to each other's presence. That's the main thing at the bottom of it all. That is why we exist. Our lives by ourselves, by itself, is nothing. Can you imagine us, you, existing? It's like, what's that show name? Zachariah? Or something. It's like nobody's there without somebody else, without some pe even people we don't like. It's, it's just no man is an island. We exist to bear witness to each other's presence. We do this when we share our time effort or energy and or attention you know and whatever set of beliefs um bring you the most peace please use them you know so that is it thank you for watching so remember to like subscribe share if you feel like and look out for our next video thanks for watching